Hey, what's up everyone? This is Gamers with Reason, and I know you probably haven't heard, I mean, nearly nobody I know at all knows, but there is going to be a new Elder Scrolls game coming out, but it's only going to be on PC. And the reason for that, there's a lot of reasons for it, but uh, as I explain everything to you, you'll kind of figure it out yourself. Now, um, first off, this game is not going to be like a whole new game, but it is going to be the combination of all the older Scrolls games combined. At least the landscapes and everything, and it pretty much is going to be the game, uh, combination of all the games, except the, I guess you'd say the main story, but there is going to be stories and quests and everything that you would expect from an Elder Scrolls game. And um, another thing is that uh, this game is going to be 200 player, which is going to be really, really fun, and um, you can play with your friends or just random people, so... If you've been wanting to play with your friends on an Elder Scrolls game, uh, this will be your opportunity to. And um, you could be fighting against, uh, you could have huge epic battles like 100 players versus 100 players. And you could actually fight for, um, let's just say, the castle at like Cyrodiil, you know, fight for the town and take over the territory or something. And um, whoever is the best player out of the entire battle will be um, named the Emperor. So that's going to be really fun. And um, <clears throat> one of the things that's going to be really concentrating on about this game is the combat system. What they're really trying to do is just make it very realistic and make it just get you really into it, you know? And uh, they're going to try to offer a lot more moves and make it just have more options than the Elder, Elder Scrolls games, you know? Instead of just slashing and just hitting guys and maybe a couple of other things, you know, they give you more options. Uh, you know, probably similar moves like the ones in Oblivion, like the one where uh, when you do a 360 and then you stab the person after going in a circle like that. And, um, or just like a backslash, which I believe what actually wasn't Scar. You get the skills high enough. But anyways, um, uh, a great example is if someone was just charging at you like crazy, like they're going to really try their best going all out to take you out. And you could just be standing there like 99% of the time, and then at the last second, just completely dodge. There's probably going to be some rolling or flipping or some sort of, like, jumping that can just, you know, really get you into dodging moves like that. This, it's going to be really fun to see what it's going to be like, you know. And um, one thing I'm really excited for is just, you know, seeing how much weapons um, that they have there and what they're going to look like overall considering, you know, they look a little bit different between each game, even though sometimes they pretty much are the same weapons, but they slightly look better, you know, in the newer games, of course, because of the graphics difference. And one thing I was really happy about after seeing uh, the trailers that they have, in case you don't know, they have a very limited amount of videos. They only have, like, a few videos, and that's about it. So they don't... <clears throat> that's probably why not very many people know about this game. But anyways, um... After seeing that, I saw that they are actually doing a pretty good job of um, putting the landscapes together, and I guess you could say having things match up. Because you got to consider they were all made in different years, different systems, different graphics, and different coloring systems, and the way that the game was made was each one of them was made entirely different. You know, one of them may be mostly flat surfaces, the other ones might have had more mountains, and just. Uh, the way they located things, organized everything, and just all of that, you know, just all different. They're going to have to make some slight changes. I'm pretty sure they won't make too much, you know, to be able to tell us the right game. From what I've seen, uh, Morrowind, um, the, la the landscapes for Morrowind, you can tell it's Morrowind um, once you see it. Um, so they're definitely doing a good job of keeping it the way the games were, upgrading the graphics and everything, making the changes they need to, not, but while not changing too much. So they're doing a good job on that, and um, I'm really excited for this game. There's going to be a lot of quests, side quests, and everything, and it's going to be very close to, I guess you could say the graphics and everything, it's probably going to be right between Oblivion and Skyrim. <coughs> so it's going to be pretty solid graphics and everything, and you got to take into consideration, they've been, they started on this game back in 2007, so they've been working on five years so far. And uh, in case you're wondering who's making this game, it's actually Zenimax Online Studios. Um, they've actually been working with Bethesda Studios. Like, every now and then when they get a certain amount of work done, they'll send it in to Bethesda Studios and be like, Hey, um, does this seem right? Does this go with the game, you know? 
is everything okay? And just making sure they approve of everything. So that's a good sign that, you know, because we want some total strangers making a game and not exactly with permission or partnership or anything with the actual original company that made the game or series. So that's a good thing. And um, uh, I'm just really excited for this game. You know, it's 200 players and it's going to be really massive, a lot of options. And oh yeah, one thing. Um, depending on which race you choose, let's just say if you choose one of the races that was in a uh, Morrowind, you'll actually start out in Morrowind. So depending on what race you choose, you'll actually be starting out in the landscape for the game that the that it was in. So and actually, what the, what things they're going to be doing is uh, they're actually going to be making your main quests or how you start out actually quite different for each player. And one thing they're going to try to do is add a lot of uh, options for skills and stuff. You can actually like change your skills, I guess you could say, or type of person. You know, like on uh, Skyrim, how you can change from warrior to, uh, you know, mystical or something. And uh, you can change to a thief. You know, they're actually going to add an option or make a way where you can change it more often. So then, let's just say if the whole situation changes and you need to have your skills increase on certain things, let's just say, like, using a bow, you could actually change it. So then when you're in that situation, you'll probably, I guess you could say, you'll be able to uh, adapt to it better or do better for it. And um, they're going to be, like I said, doing a lot of things to make it really different for each player to really make them separate instead of just, you know, similar like everyone else. And a lot of options are all to make it really a very unique experience. And overall, I'm really excited to see what, um, this game when it comes out. I mean, I'm going to be absolutely excited. The only thing I'm worried about is I'm going to be spending too much time playing this game. But um, tell me, guys, what you think, you know. Um, are you really excited? I mean, do you think it's going to be replacing World of Warcraft? I know some people have been saying that, and it might be true. And if not, then it's gonna, the least it's going to do is, is compete against World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft has been around forever. It's got a lot of players on it still, you know. You know, eventually they might have to step away from it, of course, you know. Even though people don't like to admit it, eventually graphics are going to get so intense and realistic that when you look at World of Warcraft, you're just going to be absolutely disgusted by it. And that's why, for Blizzard, I recommend for them to do, to really keep up, is uh, simply be like some of the other companies and have HD packs, high-resolution texture packs, you know, little graphical upgrades, or add in some serious stuff, like let's just say like some games, like physics, you know, like things can actually break and destroy, and you know, knock a tree down and that kind of stuff. And um, particles, the light, the shadow, the sun system, the weather, just little things to really make it much more realistic, you know. And, um, you know, but don't do it in a way where you're like forcing everyone to have to run all that stuff, you know, because if someone has a crappy system, you know, they might not be able to play anymore after that. But if they just keep on doing that every now and then, they will be keeping up with the most current games. And, um, yeah, I think that would be their best thing to do, but at this rate, they're choosing not to. But maybe they will last a long time. But, um, anyways, thanks again, everyone, for watching this video. Please comment, rate, and subscribe, and see you guys in the next video.